Hello and welcome to this video on the traveling salesman problem with dynamic programming. Today we're going to have a look at some source code. This is the second video on the traveling salesman problem. The first video explains how to solve this problem with dynamic programming. And in this video, we're looking at uniquely the source code. So make sure you watch the previous video before diving into this one. The source code I'm going to present today can be found at github.com slash slash algorithms. Under the graph theory or dynamic programming section, there will be a link in the description. All right, here we are in the source code for the traveling salesman problem with dynamic programming. This is the iterative implementation. If you look in the repository, you should see that there is also a recursive implementation if you are interested in that. This implementation is in the Java programming language, but you should be able to translate it pretty easily to any programming language. So let's get started. So if we want to solve this problem, we're going to have to create this object called TSP dynamic programming iterative and it has two constructors, one with a distance matrix as an input, and the other optional constructor is the distance matrix, but also with a designated starting node. So by default, I have the starting node to be zero, but you can set that to be whichever node you like. And then, I simply store how many nodes are in the graph and then check for some edge cases. I haven't supported n equals two yet, but that should be pretty trivial to do. And then just check for some edge cases, make sure the matrix is square, you know, just that kind of stuff. And then I cache the start position and the distance in these instance variables. And then here are the two methods that you will be interested in. The first is called get tor, and it returns a list of integers representing the optimal tor for the input graph. And this other method called get tor cost returns the minimum tor cost. And notice that they both call the solve method if the solver has not been a run yet. I could call the solve method in the constructor, but that's generally considered bad practice to do work in the constructor. So I leave it up to the methods to call the solve method. Or you can explicitly call it yourself, it doesn't matter. So the solve method is what basically solves the traveling salesman person problem. So the first thing I do is I initialize a variable called the end state. And this is the state with all nodes visited. So all bits are set to one. Then I initialize a memo table of size n times to the n. And it takes type double. So initially this entire table is filled with null values. And then I do an initialization step where I add um, all edges from the starting node to every other node, which is not start node. So this is like the first step in the slides, if you remember correctly, and then you set it equal to the value in the adjacency matrix. Then we start the, the phase where we're trying to create tours of path that are one longer. So R is once again, the number of nodes in the partially completed tor. Then we loop through all subsets with R bits set produced from our combinations function, which is below. I guess I'll jump to that right now. So that's right here. And this method basically generates all the bit sets of size n where our bits are set to one. And then you can see that the result is returned in this variable called subsets. So this is the combinations method and then this calls the private combinations method down here. 
So ignoring this part, which is just an optimization, if R is zero, meaning we've selected exactly R elements, then we find found a valid subset and then add it to our subsets array. Otherwise, we flip on the ith bit, recursively call the method, and then backtrack and flip off the ith bit. All right, so going back over here, now we make sure that the starting node is inside the subset, otherwise we're not going to be able to create a valid tor. Next, next we uh, loop over the variable called next from zero to n, and the next node is going to be our next like target node, the, the one we're trying to expand to, if you will. So we make sure that the next node is not the starting node, and we also make sure that it is in uh, the subset produced by the combinations function. Otherwise, we're not interested in, in it. Then we generate the mask, which is called subset without next. And this is the the state or the, the, the partially completed tor without that next node. So we basically flip off the next node and set it to zero. And this allows us to do a lookup in our memo table later on uh, so we can compute the uh, new distance. But before that, we initialize a variable called min distance, which I initialized to positive infinity. And this is the variable we're trying to uh, minimize for uh, the next node. Then for every possible end node, every possible end node, which is not the start node or the end node and is part of our subset, we calculate the new distance from the end node using the, the subset without next, and then from the end node to the next node. And then if that new distance is less than the global, or sorry, the just the min distance we declared up here, then just update the min distance and finally cache that in the memo table. So this is the, the bulk of the algorithm right here, but we're not done yet we still want to calculate the minimum cost, like the overall minimum cost of the optimal tor. And to do that, we simply loop from i is zero to n, skip over the starting node, and, and then do a lookup in our table for that end node i and the state end state, so we finished a tour and the tour ended on node i and then go from i which we ended on back to the start node so that's the tour cost and then we just minimize over this variable and update the min tour cost which if we go back you can see was one of our uh, instance variables which i had set the positive infinity so we're minimizing this and this is what gets returned on the get tor cost function. All right. So this finds the minimum tor cost. And this section you see right here uh, finds what the actual tor is, which is really useful. And it does that by looking inside the, the memo table at the values we've computed. So we initialize a variable called the last index and it's initialized to the starting node because that's essentially the very last node if you want when we do the tor we end up at the start node again. And the state is the end state. So we're working our way backwards. So we start at the end state and then we're going to slowly, um, I guess, reduce our tor until we're back to the, the starting node. So, so in our tor, we add that starting node. And then we're going to loop uh, n minus 1 times. And this variable i is just for, um, for a, a counter. So it's not 
it's not used anywhere in here. So we loop n minus one times and for this index variable, so this is like the, the node we want to, to go to next. So it's the best, it's the index of the best next node. But to find that next best node, we need to look at where we were last, which is the last index, and go to the next best node, which is going to be j. So we loop over all possible uh, j -th nodes, if you will, start j at 0 and loop up to n, and then skip over when j is equal to the start or is not in the state because we would have already visited a node otherwise. And if index is minus 1, then it's the first valid node we encounter, so set index equal to j. Otherwise, look at the previous distance, so for the node at index versus the node j, and then if selecting node j gives us a smaller value, then we know we want to update index to be j. And, and doing this for all, all the nodes will find us the next best node going backwards. Then we want to add that node's index to the tor and then toggle the, that bit off and then set the last index to be the current index. So we're going backwards and basically starting from a fully completed tour and like shrinking the tour down to um, just the starting node again. And at the very end, we want to add that starting node to the tour and then reverse the order of the tour. This is because we're going backwards. We're starting at the end state and then working our way backwards. So our tour is in effect in reverse order. So we want to reverse the tour order, and then we can mark the solver as uh, completed. And tour, if we look up here, was just a list of integers, and tour is the variable we return when we call uh, get tour. The only thing I did not cover was this not in function, which just checks if um, a bit or the element was not set in the subset. So you check if that bit is equal to zero. And that's it for the traveling salesman problem. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Thank you.